Hello. Uh, thank you, Manos, for your very good meeting. I will talk about uh, this technique. Uh, according to idea of Lenny Johnson uh, in 1986, when he wrote in his book that in chronic recurrent dislocation with virtually uh, non-existent glenular ligament, you sh we should uh, use uh, a part of the, the subscapularis tendon. And this is, uh, 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 I think that you in uh, Greece, you know this uh, author. And he did a lot of studies in uh, the uh, behavior of the subscapularis tendon in shoulder dislocation. He stated in uh, in a paper of the journal, that uh, after several dislocations, the subscapularis tendon stretches, and uh, if you do a simple bunker repair, you could uh, uh, have a high recurrence. So that's, that uh, was the start, the idea of uh, using the uh, putty plat technique. Lenny Johnson used to fix the subscap tendons in the capsule with this staple, that, uh, uh, that they have uh, this problem because they moved, they bend. And uh, according to his uh, way of, uh, of uh, fixation, we changed the fish fixation and we, we used this type of uh, fixation and we published this, um, this technique in the Atroscovy Journal some time ago. Uh, since, uh, since then, uh, 540 patients have been treated with this technique and these are the hospitals that are using that. And uh, how to do it? Uh, you have generally to put the arm in neutral rotation. You do the anchor bone hole at two or three o'clock or 10 or nine o'clock. You should do the hole a little slightly over the top position of the glenoid edge. And you penet should penetrate the uh, subscapularis tendon at least five millimeter from its uh, uh, upper border, slightly flush to the glenoid surface in the medial lateral position. This is a, a brief video of the technique. You can see no capsule, uh, no, no labrum, uh, bad capsule. Uh, the humeral is uh, completely dislocated. First step, you have to, pre well, you have to prepare the glenoid uh, neck very well as you do a capsule of plastic. Then you do the inferior capsulography. And then you proceed to do uh, the tenodesis. You, you do the anchor bone hole at tr uh, three or two o'clock. Here is 9 or 10 o'clock. You uh, expose a little bit the subscap if you want, cutting the middle glenohumeral ligament. You penetrate the tendon with a tape. Here we are using an, an ultra tape, but you, you, we have used a fiber tape, labral tape. And uh, then we pass the tape from the upper cannula, retrieve it from the lower cannula. We do a loop. You slide the loop over the tendon and then you put the, the end of the tape uh, in the area of the anchor. You slide the anchor, the anchor to the bone hole, taking care that the, uh, the, 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 the two ends of the tape are parallel and then we, you impact. And the arm should stay in a neutral rotation or a slight external rotation. Then you can see that uh, you have a reinforce of the capsule that you have touched and the recentering of the humeral head. So it's, it's, it's a push effect of, of the head posteriorly. Uh, we did a multicenter study to see uh, how was the follow up, uh, how was the results. And uh, the mean deficit of external, no, no big external uh, limitation of external rotation in the arm in abduction, a slightly limitation of external rotation with the, the arm in adduction, but it's not important for the uh, movement of the arm. And this is, okay. And the dislocation rate, when the indication is right, is like the lethargy. We have 3% of uh, redislocation rate. And we did, a, uh, Rafael, my friend Rafael Russo did an interesting study that is going to publish. Uh, we did, a, a fo um, we followed these uh, cases to see if this, this kind of TV could uh, give uh, atropody or arthritis, but we see that uh, the results of uh, uh, eventual atropodies are the same of other stabilizing techniques like Bankar or even less than Latarge. So no, uh, no atropody after this, uh, uh, at the mid-time follow-up. 
And so we can state that we should not be afraid to use the subscapularis tendon in uh, this kind of uh, technique. And when we do ASA, in when the, the exact uh, indication, when there is uh, no capsule, when the, uh, we have in front of young patient, active sport, contact sports, and they uh, have hyperlaxity. And when the go, uh, bone loss is not so severe. This one case, you see hyperrotation of the arm in uh, adduction and in abduction. You can see in this case, and the subscapular stenosis is very lax, I can, you can see. So we have a physiological behavior of the subscapular tendon too in this patient, not only in the capsule. You can see, this is the case, very not big bone loss, before, after, recentrum of the head. And you can see how the arm after the uh, operation has a, a quite normal rotation and the contralateral side hyper rotation. So uh, in conclusion, we use uh, this technique in patients with hyperlaxity, bad capsule, not mild bone loss, when the lateral J may be over indicated and the banker repair is not uh, enough. So consideration, this is not a putty plant. And uh, why it works? We really exactly don't know, but we have some hypotheses. Uh, we think that the scar tissue that uh, um, is going on after this stenodesis um, can help uh, and reinforce the coracohumeral ligament, reducing the uh, anterior inferior shift of the humeral head. This is where we put the anchor, where we put the, the tape, and we did a biomechanical study in Hanover, and we saw that uh, the, greater, the, the effect of this technique is greater than the bunker and reduced the anterior and the anterior inferior translation in front of a simple bunker repair. So this is what should it does. And the other thing we think that maybe he does an opposite effect of the remplissage, pushing the humeral head posteriorly. In the other way, the remplissage pulls the humeral head posteriorly. Uh, and so in the end, we think that in the remodeling process, the other reinforces the coracal humeral ligament and improves the biological healing of the bunker repair. This is a second look. This was a guy who had uh, more than 90 dislocation, not very big bone loss. This was before the operation, no capsule in front. The humeral vessel dislocated. We did the bunker repair with ASA. Then the, after three, two years and a half, three years, he had the trauma, pain. So we wanted to do a second. We could do a second look, and I can show what what happened after. Uh, this is you can see the labrum was completely restored. The center, the humeral head was recentered. You see the labrum, very strong labor, and a band of fibrous tissue going up on the north side of the joint. Uh, and how do you, see, how do you heard by my friend Ettore, we are starting using from an idea of my friend Rafael Russo, ASA in addiction with bone block augmentation. We have done till now uh, 35 procedures. Actually, I, yesterday I, I heard from Manos that he did four. So we have done 39 procedures till now. This is Hector, Hector and, uh, and uh, he, his idea, I, well, I think it was really brilliant for, and then you, you have realized before. And uh, this is uh, the technique, uh, this is uh, what we, we have done in a, in a redislocation. We, we have, uh, this is the bone block, perf perfectly, uh, uh, sits on the glenoid neck, and then uh, the capsule was no good, so we did a simple ASA. Like Eto says, it's uh, 15 minutes. We don't take care about the capsule because we don't think it's, it's, uh, I think we, it's useless. And uh, this is the case now. You can see that uh, the, the tendon in the capsule sticks, uh, pushes the, 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 the graft uh, posteriorly. This is at two months. You can see the well position of the grad. And what has uh, Etre says that uh, you can see there is an, an over 
um, tissue, bone tissue that if you have a remodeling of the, a biological remodeling of the graft, you still have enough uh, bone uh, ground for uh, what you need. This is the guy after two months, quite no limitation of external rotation, good internal rotation. The, the shoulder is the left shoulder. Huh? Here it is. And then the future we have made with Ettore and Raffaele and a pre-assembled graph, right? it's a xenograft. We have two shapes, one bigger, one uh, smaller. You, you have seen in the Ettore operation the bigger one. Uh, it reduced the operating time and uh, you have the exact shape of the graft without uh, using or autograft or allograft and you, you, you can stay the same uh, biological uh, uh, follow-up because if you get an allograft from a bank, you never know how much is going to uh, absorb, uh, how much is going to do, because uh, there are many variables, uh, different bone, bone, bone banks, uh, different individuals. This is the same. So we'll see how, they, how this it will heal. And uh, if it heals well, I think that is uh, uh, the best option to do. We have done, we have tested uh, with uh, my friend Rafael in uh, the lab. Uh, the, the graph, the xenograph has been tested even biomechanically and it uh, with the, has a, a good failure point more than the allograft and this is the graph that, uh, in, a, in a specimen. Very easy to do it. Here it is. And we are trying, publishing a new algorithm like uh, Ettore shows how with this, all this technique a la carte we can offer to all of you. Thank you very much. <laughs>